This is Chris Payne from Euclid, Ohio, and you are listening to Barbecue Central. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh! Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show, the show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big-name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs, you'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting Visiting the website, thebbqcentral.com. Now, let's get in the smoke. Here's your program host, Greg Rempe. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Barbecue Central Show. Yeah, that's right. It's the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on a Tuesday evening, broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. Hello. Dare I say the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. Dare I say the uh, barbecue capital of the North Coast, Cleveland, Ohio. And happy to have you here. And uh, thanks for joining me. Lots of great stuff planned for this evening. In case you want to get in touch with the show tonight, you can do it one of two ways. You can dial in toll-free, 877-448-0433. You can also email the show at any point, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. Again, toll-free, 877-448-0433. Or email greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. Central Lights, how's your life? No reaction? Fine. Let me tell you what's happening tonight because I'm sure you're wondering. In case you haven't gotten the newsletter, you don't follow me on the Twitter, you don't friend me on Facebook, you're just hoping and praying that something great is going to fall out each and every Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. Well, let me bring you into the fold. Coming up in about 13 minutes from now, we're going to be joined by creator of Knox Spice Company. They also happen to make delectable sauce. Brian Knox. He's going to be talking about the rub biz, what it's like to get into the business, how to market your product, some of the pitfalls that he has faced getting into the successful rub game as he has uh, so successfully done. And look, we all inherently like to make some of our own products. If you're making barbecue sauce, if you're making rub, I think it was my cousin who turned me on to barbecue in general all the way back like five, six years ago. That, tr- that barbecue isn't yourself or, or isn't truly yours until you've made your own sauce and made your own rub. And then, of course, there's that whole next level of people tasting your sauce or people tasting your rub and saying, man, you got to sell this stuff. It's freaking gold, man. Get it up on the shelves and start making millions. Well, it's a different story and a different tune. And an expert to talk on that subject is my good friend Brian Knox from Knox Spice. And uh, his website, by the way, knoxspice.com, K-N-O-X-S-P-I-C-E.com. So check him out. Great rubs. Brian Knox coming up in 11 minutes from now. Third segment, my mom, Connie Rempe, joining us, making her triumphant return with Connie's Recipe Corner. And she has got, let me see, I'm looking at the page right now, a uh, appetizer, a main dish, and it looks like we also have a dessert, as usual, uh, typically three or four dishes from Connie. And... These do not look like they'll be disappointing at all. So, as usual, if you like what you hear and you want to get your own copy, you can email the show. And in the subject line, just stick Mom's Recipes or Connie's Recipe Corner. And then be sure to date it. Be sure to date it for tonight. And that is uh, 125 11. Anybody still uh, putting 2010 on their dates and papers and so forth? Legal documentarians, if you will. I almost said uh, 2010. My, dude, what is going on with my microphone right about now? Because I am just about ready to jump off on other things. Nevertheless, we continue on. For a segment free for all, following Connie's Recipe Corner for your chance to win fun and succulent prizes to include frog mats, oakwood, smokewood products from Greenleaf Barbecue. We have El Capitan Santa Maria style barbecue seasoning. We have the full allotment of gift pack from Cosmos Q, which offers the pork and beef 
injections and the chicken and pork soaks. So a substantial prize from Darian over at Cosmos Q. Plus we have the wild game rub from the good folks over at Barbecue Hooks. Look, it's a veritable cornucopia of prizes that you can choose from as long as you know how to answer three barbecue questions or three questions from the sports world. And it's going to be hosted by Harry Carey. It's always hosted by Harry Carey, so stay tuned for that to round out the first hour. Second hour, we're going to be kind of shooting it with a uh, first-timer on the show. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer when he retired from the NFL. A defensive lineman extraordinaire, a nine-time Pro Bowl selection. He was a NFL Super Bowl MVP in Super Bowl twelve, I believe. And it's a Randy White, Randy the Manster White from uh, Dallas Cowboys fame. He's going to be talking to us, and he's going to be joining the show a little bit later in the second hour, around about 10.30. We're going to be talking about, obviously, the big game. Nobody uh, better to break down the matchup impending in the Super Bowl between the Steelers and the Packers. And somebody that's actually played the game actually had a lot. I mean, three Super Bowls. That's a lot of Super Bowls. I mean, only Jim Kelly and... I think uh, the, the the Denver Broncos have uh, been in like consecutive Super Bowls, but you got Randy White going to be joining us, and he he was in three Super Bowls. He won it once. He was an MVP of the one he was uh, so successful in winning, and he'll be able to break down a little football for us, what he likes about the Steelers, what he likes about the Packers, who he thinks might win, and of course, this is a barbecue show. It's related to barbecue and grilling. He's going to tell us about the messiest and best-tasting barbecue sandwich via Randy White, who also has a restaurant, Randy White, Randy White's BBQ.com, I believe is the website, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can find that. Is that, uh, oh, where is it? Randy White, yeah, Randy White's, so it's plural. Randy White's BBQ.com is his uh Website, if you want to check that out, prior to him joining the show, which will be in about an hour and a half from now, 1030. Former NFL great, a Hall of Famer on the first ballot, and an, a uh, Super Bowl MVP, Randy White, going to be talking football, going to be talking barbecue, and it is going to be a fandangled good time. All that, plus your emails and calls, if you're so inclined to jump in on the show tonight. And once again, the contact information, 877 877 448 and the email is greg at the bbq central show.com. Lawrence, uh, who is this guy? Lawrence Spooner already jumping in, wanting mom's recipes. He knows a good thing when he hears it, my friends. And he's already asking for recipes. He hasn't even heard the recipes that my mom is going to be doling out tonight, but he knows through past experience that her recipes that she shares are really of high standard and high extraordinariness. And he is not ready to wait. He is ready to put in his bid for these recipes. So, uh, Lawrence, please wait a little bit. I will dispatch them post-haste, perhaps even during the break, if you're so inclined. And uh, really, that's what we have lined up. So, jam-packed show, as always. And we are happy to take your comments, happy to take your calls. Don't forget, really, what is the inaugural big-time competition barbecue event that kicks off the Kansas City Barbecue Society's competition season taking place this coming weekend in Lakeland, Florida. So to all of the teams that are making the trek down there, or perhaps already in Florida, a lot of Florida Barbecue Association teams, I would imagine, going to kind of jump sanctioning bodies and get their piece of the action, that first taste of competition this season. So to all the teams out there, Good luck to you, and very, very much good smoking luck if we know what we're talking about there. Never mind. All right, gang, quick reminder about uh, D-Dog's Barbecue Rub. Continuing to offer free shipping like it's going out of style, and it's on all orders. If you head on over to their website, ddogsbbq.com, they also have two new products, a Texas-style barbecue sauce and a jalapeno rib glaze. And by the way, did I mention... Everything is shipped to you for free. Well, of course I did because you just heard me say it. So head on over to ddogsbbq.com. Go order some today. You'll be glad you did. And don't forget, D-Dog's barbecue sauce is better than ketchup. Also, special mention to a new fan of the show, somebody here in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city, Carlos Lera. What's up, brother? Thanks for tuning in tonight. And for last week, too, you're a fan. We'll be back with Brian Knox right after this. Stand by. I'll be right back.
Barbecue fans travel from all over the country and the world to learn the secrets of real pit barbecue from grand champion pit master Conrad Haskins. Now take your skills to the next level with a Barbecue Institute pit master class. You'll learn how to make sauces, rubs, and smoke mouth-watering barbecue every time you cook. Your new skills will impress friends and family. Internet forums, blogs, and Facebook are full of success stories from our graduates. Upcoming classes locations include Rock City Rib Fest, Rochester, New York, Lexington, Massachusetts, Lang Factory Test Kitchen in Georgia, Fort Worth, Texas, Fredericksburg, Texas, Houston, Texas, Monroe, Washington, and Kennewick, Washington. For more information, class dates, and contests we'll be competing in, visit www.bbqclass.com. That's bbqclass.com. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. This is the Barbecue Central Radio Show. 13 past the hour. This portion brought to you by the good folks over at the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices, not to mention a host of other products that make your barbecue and grilling life easier. Two ways to find them on the inner tubes at thebbqguru.com, or you can call them toll-free on your landline or your cell phone or whatever you got. 800-288-GURU. 800-288-GURU. The good folks over at the Barbecue Guru. All right, as promised, we're going to race over to the hotline and uh, bring up a rub maker extraordinary business owner and a hell of a great guy. It's friend of the show, first-time guest, Brian Knox. Brian, how are you, buddy? Hey, I'm fine, Craig. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fantastic, Brian. Thanks for asking, and I appreciate you making time for the show tonight. Uh, before we get into the Knox Spice business and all that good stuff, how about a little background about yourself what you do during the day, uh, all that great stuff. Uh, well, what I do during the day is mainly try to pay my mortgage. Uh, <laughs> How's that working out for you? Yeah, well, so far, so good. Uh, it has been working out pretty good. And, and I cook a lot. So a lot of times during the day, I prepare things and uh, try out, believe it or not, a lot of other people's product. Brian Knox joining us here on the show. So, Brian, I would imagine, or perhaps I can't even imagine, but, uh, you know, a lot of people in this barbecue game, they start to make their own rub at some point after they get versed in how to at least cook the meats somewhat well. And inevitably, a neighbor or friend, coworkers taste their rubs, and they're like, man, you should start selling this stuff. How did the process work for you? Well, I, I started making rubs with my brother, and uh, he was always better than I was, or at least he thought he was in his own in his own head. <laughs> And with the internet coming on like it did, we started ordering different spices and stuff from all over the place. And all of a sudden, there was a huge resource for finding all kinds of strange herbs and spices. And we started really competing over it. And then we decided, well, heck, we're making stuff a lot better than we're buying at the grocery right now. Why don't we put it together into a package? And that was, shoot, six, we started doing that, for, well, not full time, but serious about six or seven years ago. So how do you go, I mean, like, what are the first portions of starting it? What do you have to research first in order to, to get the product to market? Oh, you got to find a commercial kitchen or a packer, and you really need to find out about your market. Um, the first thing you learn real quick is you can't sell dry rub to guys that make their own dry rub. You know, if you think you're going to go down <laughs> into South Carolina and sell dry rub to somebody, you might want to rethink your strategy. Because there's a million great dry rubs down there, and a lot of those guys make their own dry rubs anyway. So you you need to really figure out if you can compete, and um, you know find a niche in the market where you can make a little money to support support your habit, basically. All right. So how do you go about trying to figure out which niche you fit or where you're going to kind of kind of mix in to potentially make some of that money back? Well, with us, we had already bought, like most everybody else's, commercial dry rub. I mean, since the last several years, since I've known you and I've met, you know, a whole bunch of different people like Larry Wolf and, you know, Big Ron Garcia and these guys, and you get to try other people's products and, um, you know, try to try to figure out kind of um, how everybody else fits in and try not to fill a void that's 
really pretty full already. And we decided to go towards the gourmet market. And we knew we would never sell dry rub in the Carolinas, but we sell a lot of dry rub in Southern California. And we sell a lot of dry rub in Washington State and New England and places I never thought they would even barbecue, to tell you the truth. So were you, were you, I mean, were you thinking of it as you were trying to get into a barbecue market there, or were you just selling a spice and dry rub to complement whatever they were cooking? Or were you specifically looking to get into the barbecue and grilling market? Well, you know, at first, at first we did start really looking at the barbecue market and stores that sold just barbecue things. And we kind of stumbled into the gourmet market. Um you know, we wanted to make a product that was that was all natural. We didn't want any fillers in it. You know, we, we wanted it to be as great as we thought it was. And um, once you start getting around barbecue markets and you realize that, um, you know, it, it's pretty tough competition anyway. Not that I wouldn't really and not that I don't enjoy being in the barbecue market, but, but we do uh, probably a lot more retail business through gourmet markets. I was going to say, I mean, I see online and I would imagine you're doing pretty well online, but is the majority of the money, as far as the business model is concerned and the sales figures that you're seeing year after year, now that you've been doing it six or seven years, coming from, you know, uh, selling into grocery store chains or, or commercial events? You know, our our commercial accounts are, are pretty good. You know, we do real well here in Chicago. Um, we do really well, and that and there's a few places down in Florida we do really well in. We have found in the last couple of years that we do really well with uh, our item as a gift item that people enjoy sending it to other people and not even ordering it for themselves, which I thought was funny, but. You know, I'm more than happy to make gift baskets. I enjoy it, and I think it gives people a great way to receive it. Brian Knox joining us here. He is uh, the owner of Knox Spice. KnoxSpice.com is the website if you want to go ahead and check it out. And I think, you know, Brian, as you just kind of alluded to, you do have that unique feature of those gift baskets where you offer your products, and they come that nice basket. You have the towels as well. It's really I mean, not to be redundant, but as far as giving it out to somebody that is already a passionate barbecue or griller, it's it's almost kind of a, a nice added classy uh, gift basket normally than than you would normally see at some of the other outlet retailers on the Internet. Yeah, I thought the, the one thing that, that, that me and Tim did early on was we did not want a gift basket that was full of crap. And so, you know, because there's all this foam involved and shrink wrap involved. And, you know, we went through a lot of gift kind of items looking for what we wanted to do. And we decided that if you couldn't cook it, eat it or burn it, that uh, we didn't want it in our gift basket. So that's when we put hickory chips in it to pack it. And I was like, you know, that works out real nice because a lot of people that don't, you know, traditionally grill and maybe they don't really barbecue or they don't really smoke. You know, we'd kind of turn them on to that. And also, it became such a unique item that people would actually bring it into stores and see, try to find it. And I, I've gotten retailers call me over it, which has been really nice. That was one of the other questions as I had was, you know, how much of the word of mouth after people get it and they show it to somebody and now they're bringing it to stores saying, hey, I'd like to get something like this. Can you quantify any type of percentage that you're getting from people just word of mouthing it into places? You know, I can't, I don't know for sure because a lot of times people, people don't get real friendly when they're buyers. They're looking to get a pretty good deal and, uh, you know, get it in their store quick. They, they really don't care about my background too much or how they found out about it. But there was a place in Florida just recently where a guy brought in the chicken rub and uh, showed it to the girl. And now we send it down there to him and he buys it from their store, which is really nice, I think. All right, so Brian, let's go over the products portfolio that you have. We'll start with the rubs, uh, kind of start out with, my, I guess, what would be selling best, and we'll kind of work down from there. Yeah, you know, what sells the best is the cracked pepper rub, because I guess, oh. you know, most people in, in our markets and the more gourmet markets, if they're cooking out, they're cooking steak. Yeah. Now, in my house, it's typically chicken or pork, um, but we get a lot of orders for cracked pepper rub from uh, retail markets in, that are in the gourmet sector. It's so good, too, by the way. I use it on steaks, obviously, as you just alluded to. Uh, mm-hmm. Plus, my wife makes a nice compound avocado butter that goes oh. excellently well with the uh, cracked pepper rub. So uh, definitely, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. But uh, you also have uh, some other rubs that uh, just aren't beef-related. Yeah, we have a jerk rub that uh, the original recipe was brought to me by a friend of mine uh, who who has a house in Jamaica, and I'd never really been, you know, I'm from Virginia, you know, 
in the Shenandoah Valley, and we didn't get a lot of Jamaican jerk in, in the Shenandoah Valley when I was a kid. <laughs> but I kind of fell in love with it because it was so weird. You know, there's there's a weird uh, uh, blend going on with jerk rubs. And when you start researching jerk rubs, it can be as simple as three or four ingredients. It could be 30 or 40 ingredients. And that's if you can get somebody to tell you what they're doing. And that one I like a lot, and I've even put that one on beef. And then our Chipotle barbecue rub was that smoky kind of southwestern, even northern Mexico um, profile, mainly for pork. That that was mainly what we designed that one for. And that was our first rub. That was the first one we did because once we found out about Chipotle peppers and we could get them in any kind of quantity, we jumped right on that. Brian Knox from Knox Spice joining us here on the show. The other thing that I became inherently in love with the first time I tried it was that uh, ambrosia pepper sauce. Yeah. Love yeah, it. that's that's one of my favorites, to tell you the truth. And, and, and it's it, it, it's not even in full production. And we're making that in very small quantities right now. And we can't even afford to ship it in any kind of quantity for retail. The only <laughs> place you can get it is on our website. Uh, because it's an all-natural product, it, it's ridiculously expensive to get a packer to um, – to take it on, especially in a quantity that we could afford. So we're, we're making it you know, in a commercial kitchen and we're doing it in real small quantities, you know, eight, 10 cases at a time. And we're just selling it in gift baskets and off our website. But, but yeah, it's hard because you talk to a co-packer about a sauce like that and they instantly want to put preservatives in it. Well, I can tell you right now, I've got bottles that we played around with five or six years ago that have never been refrigerated. They've been opened every couple of weeks and used and, uh, they're stable, you know. There's enough vinegar in it to um, to stabilize any kind of bacteria in it. Uh, and I personally, I think it's wonderful in just about everything. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I can't imagine that for as as you say, the, the small batches and the bo- the bottles are there to prove it. I mean, they're not huge bottles. And you mm-hmm. open it up and you first get that flavor in your mouth, and you're like, "Holy crap! I'm going to try it on everything." And that bottle's gone like it's pretty gone. damn quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's nice and chunky. That's what I like about it, too. It's not full of vinegar, and we use you know, peaches and pineapple. We wanted it to be sweet. We didn't want it to be super hot because, personally, my stomach at my age, I just can't take it anymore. Yeah, it's a great uh, it's a great sauce, and as you said, it's not too hot. Uh, definitely kind of right in there for everybody's taste. You know, Brian, as you kind of look back with Knox Spice, and for some of the people that might be thinking about getting into the rub and getting into the sauce business, aside from that co-packer, any other pitfalls that you might have – faced that you wouldn't mind sharing with us so other people might be able to avoid that well i think the biggest pitfall is the co-packing because it's so hard to find a good one and um you know i would advise everybody to save your money if you're looking to do it save your money find a good co-packer and get a non-disclosure agreement inspect the facility and uh, make recipes that are truly unique, you know, something that you really eat all the time, not just try to make a product that you think because it's got a catchy name that, that people might happen to buy it because they're probably not going to buy it twice. Um, so, so I would say if you're going to try to get into the business, just make sure you got a product you truly believe in. Is there a... Uh... Is there any way when you're getting into it, do you have to look at getting into like physical locations like street, uh, brick and mortar places, grocery stores and chains to actually start making some real money? You can't really subsist on just Internet sales alone, I would imagine. No, not unless you're an Internet marketing guru. And I know a thing or two about the Internet and it's still really hard. You know, I do really well in the search engines and you still got so much competition out there and you've got so many people out there that are. Um, willing to knock you out of the top 10 for, for no reason at all, that it's real important to go talk to people in stores and to have a little bit of product on hand so you can take it to them and let them try it, you know, and see if it fits in with their other products and be as competitive pricing-wise as you can. Now, our product's kind of on the expensive side as the price point goes for a lot of stores. That's why our wholesale price, and we've included shipping in the price because we figured that we are already – you know, we've already invested so much money in putting these rubs together in an all-natural state without using any kind of silicone or coloring or um, anything that would thin it out that we would try to ease them up a little bit on the shipping. But knocking on doors and being in a store would really help out when somebody's starting out. You know, it's real important that as soon as you've got products sitting there that you walk out and bring it with you and take it to the stores and talk to these people. 
Brian Knox, joining us here on the show, creator of the Knox Spice brand, also that Ambrosia pepper sauce, which I love so much. And again, the website, K-N-O-X, Knox Spice, S-P-I-C-E, nice spelling, KnoxSpice.com. Brian, I appreciate you coming on tonight and kind of giving us that insight to the rub and sauce biz and uh, some great info as far as researching the Packers and some of the other pitfalls uh, that you would face. Certainly appreciate you opening up about that. Continue Hello. success with the product, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you, Greg. All right, take care. There he is. Brian Knox. By the way, if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter and you've seen that uh, ad that's going to be going in Tailgater Monthly with that awesome logo and that whole right-hand side of the page that we're going to be getting, uh, thanks to Kevin Miller over there at Tailgater Monthly, that guy, Brian Knox, by the way, just happened to put that whole ad together. So when he says he knows a little something about the interwebs, he's not kidding. He's a uh, image genius, and I certainly appreciate uh, his help with that as well. So it's a great product, Knox Spice. Dot com, K-N-O-X-S-P-I-C-E, KnoxSpice.com. Check it out. Pick some up for yourself. And again, you got to hook up with that Ambrosia pepper sauce, baby. It's so awesome. All right, we're going to step back for three minutes. We'll come back with my mom for Connie's Recipes Corner and four-segment free-for-all after that. The Manster Randy White at 1030. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Forget going from site to site to get all of your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and egg accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and country smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred's also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber, as well as a full line of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. And you can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichlin of Barbecue U fame. Check out Fred on the web at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Introducing Cosmos Q. Cosmos Q injections and marinades use only the finest ingredients, and they mix easily, never clotting or caking. From our beef injection to our pork injection, you're guaranteed to wow your friends, family, and judges. And don't forget to check out our Cosmos Chicken Soak for that moist and tender chicken you're going to love. And don't forget about Cosmos' new pork soak and rubs. <laughs> <clears throat> you can find us at CosmosQ.com and select retailers across the nation. For quality injections, marinades, and rubs, it's Cosmos Q. Joe B's gives you every vitamin and all the minerals naturally to get energy and feel great. Go to JoeBees.com. That's J-O-E-B-E-E-S.com. <laughs> The smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. 32 past the hour. Welcome back to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. This portion brought to you by the good folks over at the Yoder's Smoky Mountain Barbecue, the leading online retailer of Meadow Creek barbecue equipment. 
Their barbecue smokers and grills are handcrafted in the Amish country of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, helping you enjoy easy and profitable barbecues for years to come. Visit them on the inner tubes. Serious BBQs, it's plural, Serious BBQs, SeriousBBQs.com. Good folks over at Yoder Smoky Mountain Barbecue. Also, go ahead and uh, friend them up on the Facebook. They have a lot of great opt-ins on their website, secret barbecue techniques and tips that Laverne Gingrich is there to share for you. So check them out, SeriousBBQs.com. Check them out. Can anybody name that, what I just did? Never mind. All right. Stand by for this. She's cooked for him for years, and now she takes time out of her busy schedule to help out his pathetic internet radio show by sharing some of her favorite recipes. Greg's mom, Connie Rempe, is on the line. There she is. It's my mom. Mom, what's up? Mom, what's up? Hello. Oh, have you got me there? I have you here. Do you I have you there? I, I unfortunately hearing myself in the background. Uh, you're not watching the show, are you? I am not. Oh, well, you sound all right to me. Okay. All well, right. I'm okay now, so I don't know what that was, but uh, it's passed. All right. Well, nevertheless, here you are. You're back again. You've had a long hiatus. I've heard there's been a lot of uh, celebrity tours that you've been going around. There's been cookbook deals from appearing on the show, but evidently uh, some things have slowed down at least enough to get you back on here. So, uh, you know, happy new year. Here we are almost a month uh, into 2011. How does everything find you out there in Florida? Well, it's actually wonderful, except uh, this evening we were having uh, quite some violent storms, but uh, it seems to have passed through at this point, so uh, things have calmed down, so this is good. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, safety first, and now let's go ahead and move on to the gluttonous uh, thing that is our Connie's Recipe segment. Uh, th- we uh, we do it like three uh, three things at once here. We're doing appetizers. We're doing main entrees. Is that redundant, main entrees? We're doing uh, appetizers, entrees, and desserts, and we always like to start with the appetizer. What's on tap? We have a three-cheese avocado dip, Um, and this is one of my go-to recipes. It's really nothing new, but it's um, always a favorite, and uh, the three cheeses involved here are your cream cheese, your Parmesan cheese, and your shredded pepper jack cheese. And uh, to that, you're adding mayonnaise, um, a jar of artichokes that you've drained and chopped, uh, a couple green scallions that are thinly sliced, um, some Worcestershire sauce, some salt and pepper, and then uh, some hot sauce. And, you know, that's kind of up to your personal taste how much you want to add to that. Uh, You're just going to mix that all together, pop it into a pie plate, Put it in the oven for about 30 minutes until it's nice and hot and bubbly and uh, serve it with some crackers and chips. And, uh, you know, everybody loves it. Uh, and why wouldn't you? It's like 100 percent fat. So, you know, that's a good thing. All right. Now, I have a question. Um, yes. To be honest, I think scallions are the devil's uh, the devil's food, along yeah. with uh, along with watermelon. Uh, I mean, is that something that's mandatory? Because I I would rather eat nails. (laughs) Nothing is mandatory. You know, cooking recipes are more of guidelines. So if you don't like something, just, you know, take it out, add whatever you like. You know, it's, it's up to you. You can be very flexible. All right. Well, that's great. I'm glad that we don't have to have scallions in there, but it seems a number of people right there on the instant message are are big fans of scallions or or onions of some degree. I mean, if as long as it's a caramelized onion, I'll eat it. Uh, But anything potentially raw uh, gets uh, the zero for me. So uh, that's the three cheese artichoke dip, but I'm a big fan of artichoke dip uh, nonetheless. Uh, Yeah. So that's going to be good stuff to start out with. Uh, So where are we moving for the entree? Then we're going to linguine with clams. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. I mean, and this one, we just had this uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it is so fresh. It's so delicious. You know, they say um, seafood should taste like the sea, and this one does. (laughs) Well, Well, I mean, what the hell else would it taste like? (laughs) Well, it shouldn't be overwhelmed with, you know, thick sauces or lots of cheese. It should just smell and taste like the sea. Right. Sure. Right. Nothing smells fresh like salt. (laughs) Well, that's good, you know. 
salt and fat. I got it. I'm with you. Yeah. So to start with this, um, say in the morning before you're going off to work, you're going to start with uh, in a big bowl, bowl big enough to accommodate a pound of pasta and three dozen clams. Oh, my. Yeah. You're going to add like a third of a cup of extra virgin olive oil with six cloves of garlic, three of which are going to be mashed, three of which are thinly sliced. Put that in the olive oil, <clears throat> add to that some red pepper flakes, some salt and pepper, and just leave that to marinate while you're at work all day. So you've got half the prep going for you already. And uh, when you get home, you want to start by cleaning your clams. And uh, you're going to want to take a little scrub brush and and really scrub each one of them really well to get off any mud or leftover gunk that might be on them. You're going to put them in a pan of really cold water and then add to that some cornmeal or flour. Now that is going to, uh, since the clams are alive, the clams are going to open up and try to eat that. And by doing that, they release uh, sand that's inside them. So that uh, gets them nice and clean. You may have to do that a couple of times to get all the sand out of there. But uh, that's, you know, that's how you want to clean them. Wow. Yeah. I've and, never uh, heard of that before. Great job. Bringing nuggets of wisdom to the Barbecue Central radio show. Great job. <laughs> Love that. It works really well. Then uh, you want to chop up your parsley, which you're going to use as a garnish at the end. Then put on a large pot of water to boil for your pasta. And uh, then... Take another pot that you're going to steam the clams in and just add a quarter of a cup of water, which you're going to bring to a boil, and put the clams in there and boil them for or steam them for about three to five minutes until the clams open. Uh, And basically, you're done. Uh, Whatever clams don't open, though, you want to take those out and throw them away because they're dead and they're no good. So at that point, you're going to uh, take your clams and put them into the bowl with the marinated uh, olive oil and the garlic and pour those in there along with the liquid that uh, they, you know, was emitted after they were steamed from the clams, that nice liquor, if you call it, and um, pour in the pasta and uh, just toss it all together, put in the parsley Give it another toss, and uh, really, it is it is so delicious. Serve it with uh, a nice, crusty uh, bread because you're going to want to sop up that uh, the sauce that's in there and a toss salad, and truly, that is a delicious meal. It's like one of those meals that's so good that if you died, you'd die a happy person, although, quite frankly, we'd all rather just take a nap. Right. Just take a nap instead of dying because dying is uh, really final uh, from what scientists have uh, proven out uh, again and again, day after day. Now, uh, question, Mom. These uh, clams, we're talking about clams living. We're talking about clams dying. They're opening with sand thrown on them. They're opening (laughs) when they're steamed. At one point, does the clam die? Um, I think it can be dead before you get it. That's the thing. So like when it's but it's alive when it opens. But if it's a, it doesn't open, it's dead. Yes. Yes. But, That's but, it. But when does it, it expire? Well, I can't give you the exact time of expiration, but uh, you could be buying it from the store and it could be already dead. That's why I know my fish guy always gives me a few extra and says, hey, you know, uh, this way you're getting your three dozen and hopefully, you know, they'll all bake it, but some of them don't, and that's just the way it is. There you go, Fishmonger giving you a little land yap and you didn't even know about it. And if anybody can, <laughs> on the instant message, can tell me what land yap means, you get a free prize. How about a Nike's, uh, a Knox Spice Rub gift basket if you can tell me what land yap means. All right, so that's the uh, linguine with clams. That sounds really good. Uh, oh, but you is. gotta you gotta finish it off with the dessert, Mom. You always bring it strong here when it really counts. When the calories are at its premium, ah. what are we doing tonight? Tonight we're doing bourbon nectarine ice cream sundaes with pound cake croutons. We could leave off the nectarine ice cream sundaes with pound cake croutons, and I'd be happy. <laughs> Well, you could just have a nice bourbon with that. That's right. Yeah, yeah nothing wrong with that. 
But um, to start this, you're going to take your pound cake and cut it into half inch cubes and toss that with some butter and spread them out onto a cookie sheet and pop it in the oven for about 15 minutes until they're nice uh, toasty brown. Take it out of the oven, put it aside, then you're gonna take your nectarines and thinly slice them into wedges and uh, put them in a skillet with some more butter, stir them around until they start to soften. It's gonna take about five minutes. Then you're adding your brown sugar until that gets all nice and melty. And then you wanna take it off the burner and you're going to be adding your bourbon and a little fresh lemon juice at that point. And you're going to be igniting the bourbon. So you kind of want to tilt the pan away from you because you don't want to like, you know, light your hair on fire or anything. Uh Right. And uh, you let that just burn off until the flame goes out. And then you slip it back on the uh, burner and uh, cook it for about 10 more minutes until it's uh, nicely thickened. And uh, then you're going to serve it either in bowls if you want. I usually serve it in my stemmed uh, wine glasses because it looks really pretty. You're going to take some nice ice cream, uh, put that in the bottom of your bowl, add your nectarine with a sauce, and uh, top that with your pound cake croutons. And uh, it's yummy. It's really delicious. That gets two fats. Fat! Fat! Oh, my God. That sounds uh, deli- it, the the pound cake croutons is really putting it over the top for me for some reason. Oh, you know, it, it's just a little bit of crunchy in there, but then it gets all runny and drippy with the ice cream that kind of melts because the you know the nectarines are still warm with that bourbon sauce. Oh boy, <laughs> it really is delicious. Wow! Once yeah. again, three uh, recipes that never graced the table when I was a kid. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, at least you've saved the best since uh, you've getting all the kids out of the house. That's what I say. What you, you and Dad should just eat like kings and queens all day long with everybody else out the hell out of the house. Although we used to have linguine with clams, but we got the clams out of uh, uh, you yeah. Know. It was out of the the like the the tuna fish container. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and the bottled clam juice. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so much better. So ah, much see, better. well, look, at least you're bringing it uh, with honesty, and that's what we respect here on the show. Uh, just to recap, it's three cheese, artichoke dip to start off with your appetizer, linguine with clams as the main dish, and the bourbon nectarine ice cream sundaes with pound cake croutons. It's my mom, Connie Rempe, with Connie's Recipe Corner, bringing it strong again this week. And if you want those recipes, all you have to do is go ahead and send me an email. Make sure you put Connie's Recipe Corner in the subject line and then today's date so I know which one you're referring to. That happens to be the 25th of January in 2011. And uh, Mom, as always, I appreciate the time. And uh, we will look for you again next month for sure. Thank you, Greg. Always a pleasure. Take care. Love you. Love you too, honey. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. It's my mom. Holy crap. That woman wants to kill everybody with her sucking the dishes. Uh, Connie's Recipe Corner in the subject line. And then uh, 12511. Recipes 12511. I will get them out to you. Bourbon nectarine ice cream sundaes with pound cake croutons. Three cheese artichoke dip and linguine with clams. Ikes. Ay, 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 ay. All right, we're going to step away. Your turn to win fun and succulent prizes. By the way, rooftop barbecue, close, but uh, that's not actually it. It's close. Keep trying for your chance to win the Knox Spice Rub. 877 448 for your chance to win the free stuff. Stand by. I'll be right back. Forget going from site to site to get all of your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and egg accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and country smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred's also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber, as well as a full line of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or 
Grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. You gotta try them. And you can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichlin of Barbecue U fame. Check out Fred on the web at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Introducing Cosmos Q. Cosmos Q injections and marinades use only the finest ingredients, and they mix easily, never clotting or caking. From our beef injection to our pork injection, you're guaranteed to wow your friends, family, and judges. And don't forget to check out our Cosmos Chicken Soak for that moist and tender chicken you're going to love. And don't forget about Cosmos new pork soak and rubs. <laughs> <clears throat> you can find us at CosmosQ.com and select retailers across the nation. For quality injections, marinades, and rubs, it's Cosmos Q. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Welcome back. 10 till the hour. That's uh, 9.50 Eastern Standard Time. This is the Barbecue Central Radio Show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Thanks for joining me, and thanks to my mom for joining us last segment and handing out three succulent recipes. Also, before that, Brian Knox from KnoxSpice.com. Rooftop Barbecue wins the Lanyap, although uh, I must admit I was taught a, a different... Uh, what the hell you call that? Definition? of, um, you know, what lanyap means, which means going above and beyond normal expectation, doing something a little bit extra in business for that customer, not necessarily giving somebody a gift, but just going over uh, kind of above and beyond the call of duty. And that's what uh, Ralph De La Vega, the CEO of AT&T, talks about when he is saying lanyap. But that's fine. Lanyap, uh, good enough for me, Rooftop. So all you need to do is uh, send your shipping info over to Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com, and you win the Knox Spice, the Knox Spice gift pack, which you will be very happy with. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. That's right, Lan Yappa Party, Steve Rodriguez. You know it, buddy. Lan Yap's a great thing. Gotta love the Lan Yap. Anybody have some good Lan Yap stories? Anybody? <laughs> It does sound weird. All right, let's play the uh, four-segment free-for-all, everybody, if you're so inclined. Hey, everybody, Harry Carey here. <laughs> This is the worst thing going, I swear to God. Okay, eight minutes to go. It's Tuesday. Holy cow, that's right. Hey, Brian, holy cow. Knox Spice, I love it. I loved it when I was alive. I love it even better dead. Okay, let's play the game. Your chance to win. Call in toll free. 877-448-0433, your chance to win. You can also go ahead and answer barbecue questions or not barbecue questions. We call them sports questions where I come from. Hey, this is horrible. I gotta come up with a new gimmick. My 8x10 glossy makes me look like I'm wearing Coke bottles. Well, that's because I am. Okay, 877-448-0433 for your chance to win. You call in while I pick you up on the phone and we go over some barbecue questions. We also can go over some sports questions if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. I'm an expert in either one. I've been a host, I've been a play-by-play broadcaster, doesn't matter, I've done it all. And that's all that matters. So you can win free stuff at my expense. It's not even my expense, for crying out loud, I don't even care. I'll give it all. I know. Brian, thank you, I know I sound much younger. See, that's what happens with making deals with the devil. When you make a deal with the devil, you sound younger. You have a more youthful pep in your tone. And that's right. Okay, still waiting for your calls. 877-448-0433. As you can tell, I'm still a little cockeyed. I'm the camera. Don't make me get Steve Stone out here. 
He's a man full of fisticuffs. He'll hit you if you look at him sideways, I swear to God. Hey, here we go. Harry code 516, David, where your colleague from? Hey, Harry, this is Don. Hey, Harry, how are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Don? I'm great. How are you? Don, I'm fine. How are you? Excellent. I'm jazzed. All right, Don, would you like to play the game? Yes, I would. All right, Don, would you like barbecue questions or sports questions? Let's go barbecue questions. A barbecue questions it is, Don. Uh, earlier in the show, Greg Rempe was interviewing a guy who had a spice and rub company. Can you name the company? The name of the company is Knox Rubs. Knox Spices, excuse me. That's right, Knox Spice. That's right. Question. Uh, one for one, Don, just like Ron Say was back in the 84 playoffs. All right, Don, here's question number two. There is a... Number brand, there's a number of brands of pellet grills out there right now. A lot of them have come from, come to mind. Uh, can you name one brand of pellet grills? Yoder. No. I'm sorry, Don. Yoder's... Oh, wait a second. Don, I think I've made a terrible mistake, Don, that I've come to think about. Oh, that's all right. It's my show, buddy. Beat it. Yoders does not make a pellet grill. They're a sponsor of the show. They don't make a pellet grill. I know it. I've been on their websites. Go to Yoder Smoky Mountain. Go to SeriousBBQ.com. Don, I'm just trying to make myself feel better. I believe I've made it to a significant error. And it's not in your favor, my friend. It's not in your favor. <laughs> I believe, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Mike Davis. I think you were talking about that, Yoders, aren't you? Well, Don, what can I say? You've won every freaking prize here. I think you've won it ten times. Uh-oh. What do you want me to do? I'm sorry, Don. Can we still be friends? Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, you can still call in to win. We have a few minutes left. Uh, 216. I'm sorry, 877-448-0433. Yes, Scott, I know. Don't you know I was trying to say that I've made a mistake? Get off my back, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stuff out of here. I'm sorry, Don. Now Scott's teaming up on me. You couldn't name one of the ones that everybody knows about? I'm dead for crying out loud. What do you think I get a pellet pooper monthly down in hell? I don't. I'm lucky if I get a back scratch from, a back scratch from Satan for crying out loud. He makes me call Cleveland Browns game for being in hell. And I hate it. All right, 877-448-0433. Number to call for your chance to win some prizes. Just a few minutes left. And then we're going to go into the uh, second hour. I'm looking here. Okay, hold on a second. Here we go. Uh, Let's go to uh, California where we find Scott. Scott, how are you tonight? Hello, Scott. Yo, Greg, how's it going? I'm fine, Scott. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. All right, Scott, would you like barbecue questions or uh, sports questions? Let's try barbecue. A barbecue it is, Scott. Okay, here we go. Uh, Scott, I had a businessman on earlier. The uh, I mean, Greg had a businessman earlier uh, this morning. He's a, a uh, barbecue and rub maker. Can you name the company? Uh, Knox Spices. Knox Spices is right, Scott. You're one for one. We go to the second question. Scott, can you name a pellet grill? Name any one of pellet grill. Don't tell me Yoders. Green Mountain Grill. Green Mountain Grills is right. Uh, question number three for your chance to win a prize. Scott, are you excited? Very excited. Scott, no, I am. All right, Scott. Coming up next hour, Greg Rempe will be hosting a NFL Hall of Famer. Can you name him? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Stuff out of here. Maybe you should know NFL Hall of Famer, Scott, if you're going to call it in four segment free for all. <laughs> Just a word to the wise. All right, no winners tonight. That prize will carry over. And uh, we're out of here. Thanks for joining me tonight in four segment free for all, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there goes Harry Carey. Go- no, no winner. All right. He runs. For dead guy, that guy runs. Oh, my. All right. Um, well, don't know what happens there, but uh, there you go. We offer free prizes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes not so much. That's all right. These questions aren't as easy as one would think. 
And from what I understand, uh, they, they're, they're, they could be easy, but uh, the, the host that hosts the fourth segment free for all could make some honest mistakes that people don't need to get all bent out of shape about. Perhaps. These are just things that I hear as I'm coming back in from the Blue Room. I don't know. What can I tell you? All right. uh, Let me thank my guests again before we step away and start the second hour. Don't forget, coming up in the After Dark segment around 1030 NFL Hall of Famer. Super Bowl MVP of number 12, Randy the Manster White, joining us. Scott. There you go. We thank uh, Brian Knox for showing up. That was very awesome. Thanks for showing up, Brian. Knoxspice.com is website. Check it out. Also, thanks to Connie Rempe. That's my mom's for Connie's Recipe Corner. You want those recipes? Email the show. Put Connie's Recipe Corner in the subject line and the date 12511. I'll get them out to you. All right, stick around. We're going to be uh, stepping away for a Ken Whitaker take. And we'll come back with a second hour. It's Rempe and you right here. The Barbecue Central Radio Show.